Hello friends, welcome to the class of organic evolution. Now we are learning topic speciation from organic evolution. Let us start with introduction of speciation. What is exactly a species? A species is a population of individual with similar structural and functional characteristics which have a common ancestry and in nature breed only with each other. So this is a species and the process by which new species develops from the existing species is known as speciation. So now we know what is speciation. What are the potential modes of speciation? There are two modes of speciation. Instantaneous speciation which occurs at fast rate and gradual speciation which occurs at slow rate comparatively. So in instantaneous speciation uh, it occurs through individuals and gradual speciation occurs through the population. Instantaneous speciation can occur genetically or cytolo cytologically. Genetically, it can occur by single mutation or by macrogenesis and cytologically by chromosomal mutations or by polyploidy. And gradual speciation can occur through two ways, geographical speciation which is called as allopatric speciation and sympatric speciation. So one by one, now we'll learn this potential modes of speciation. We'll start with instantaneous speciation. Instantaneous speciation, the production of a single individual that is reproductively isolated from the species to which the parental stock belongs and is reproductively and ecologically capable of establishing a new species population. So it can occur genetically by a single mutation in a sexual species. Ordinary mutation cannot produce new species in sexually reproducing organisms. Any mutation drastically affecting reproductive behavior or ecology will be responsible for this kind of mutation by uh, this kind of speciation by single mutation. This mutation is called as micro mutation. It is a mutation with extensive or important phenotypic results and the example is exolatal. This uh, salamander starts its life as a tadpole-like larvae as do other salamanders exolatal. However, it never grows up, it doesn't sprout mature legs, keep its skills, remains aquatic existence. Injection of hormones may enable maturity and this salamander can live a normal life on land. This kind of uh, instantaneous speciation by mutation, it is called as a micro mutation. The second type of instantaneous speciation is by macrogenesis. The production of a new type of complete genetic reconstruction, which is called as a macrogenesis, or by a major system. Mutation or macro mutation is a crucial event in speciation which will often produce a hopeful monster. However, according to modern genetics, production of monster or freak individuals due to mutation does not provide the raw material for speciation as such individuals have low viability, they do not get made for sexual reproduction and subsequently they fail to establish reproductive isolation from normal members of the parental population. Therefore, microgenesis is a poor source of speciation according to the mayor. Second way of instantaneous speciation is cytologically in partially or wholly sexual species. The first way cytologically instantaneous speciation takes place, uh, can take place is by chromosomal mutations or by chromosomal abrasions. Based on the following assumptions, chromosomal mutations 
have significant role in the in instantaneous speciation. The degree of differences displayed by two species requires speciation process of such drastic dimensions that only chromosomal mutations can qualify. And the second assumption is reproductive isolation between two species cannot be achieved without chromosomal reorganization. So here closely related species often differ more conspicuously in their karyotype than in their morphology. For example, chromosome number, metacentric or acrocentric chromosome number, the presence or of kind of paracentric or pericentric inversions etc. in the chromosomes. So here in the diagram we can see the normal set of chromosomes and the second diagram shows us the translocation in the chromosome which often can lead to the instantaneous speciation. Second uh, way cytologically instantaneous speciation can, can take place is by polyploidy. Polyploidy is a multiplication of the normal chromosome number. It is widespread among plants and it is important mechanism of speciation in plant king kingdom. It is uh, comparatively rare among animals. It occurs only in those uh, animal group which reproduces parthenogenetically. So the example is uh, lubricid earthworms and turbularians and certain groups of vivils. Next kind of speciation is gradual speciation. Gradual speciation is the gradual divergence of population until they have reached the levels of the specific distinctive, distinctiveness. It is called as the, the first type of gradual speciation is by allopatric uh, way or by geographical isolation which is called as allopatric speciation. It involves geographical separation of the diverging population. Allopatric speciation occurs when geographic isolation creates a situation where reproduction can't occur and it is an extrinsic mechanism. The example is of um, Harris antelope squirrels. These two species of the squirrels, they inhabit the canyon's uh, rim. So, one species inhabits the canyon south rim. Just a few miles of mile away on the north rim lives the closely related vital antelope squirrel. Both these species cannot uh, meet with each other and uh, they, they show the separate evolution, separate adaptation to their habitat and thus they have, uh, they have shown speciation in them. Next type of speciation is sympatric speciation. It is the method of origin of reproductive isolating mechanism within the dispersal area, area of the offspring of a single deem. Sympatric speciation occurs when reproduction is not inhabited by geographic isolation but something about the individual organisms of the population changes and interferes with the reproductive capability. capability. It is an intrinsic mechanism and the example is bird of paradise. Uh, they, they show different kind of ethological behavior which, uh, which leads to the speciation among these birds. So these are the different kinds of isolating mechanism which ultimately leads to the speciation. There are prezygotic isolating mechanism. Temporal isolating mechanism occurs when two species meet at different types of the year. Ecological isolating mechanism occurs when two species occupy different habitats. Behavioral uh, uh, isolating mechanism occurs when two species have different courtship behavior. Mechanical isolating mechanism occurs when physical differences prevent population among two species. Post-zygoting isolating mechanism includes hybrid inviability. Here hybrids are produced but fail to develop to reproductive maturity. And hybrid infertility 
here hybrids fail to produce functional gametes that is sterile sterility and the last one is hybrid breakdown here f1 hybrids are fertile but f2 generations fail to develop properly so all these are isolating mechanism which leads to the speciation this is the diagrammatic representation of the uh, speciation here one single population is divided into two population because of geographical barrier and it is called as allopatric speciation caused due to the extrinsic uh, uh, extrinsic characteristics and due to intrinsic characteristic this sympatric speciation occur here the uh, habitat is same but uh, due to some behavioral pattern there are two kinds of species we can see here in this diagram one more example of allopatric speciation due to the isthmus of panama this two kinds of fishes we can see uh, on uh, um, on each side of the isthmus of panama and uh, behavioral isolation leads to the sympatric speciation the best example is blue footed uh, uh, booby bird and uh, mast booby bird because they perform the different courtship rituals what are the patterns of speciation there are two patterns of speciation one is anagenesis speciation which is non branching kind of uh, speciation and uh, the second is cladogenesis which is a branching pattern of speciation in anagenesis speciation one species is going to replace the other no net change in number of species one species will lead to the formation of one species it is not 1 plus 1 2 a slow gradual accumulation of heritable changes which are often called as adaptations in a population due to many small episodes of natural selection occur in this case so one species changes slowly step by step until it looks so different that we call it as a new species and in cladogenesis which is a branching kind of uh, speciation one species branches off from an existing species a net increase in number of species is seen here a more rapid splitting of one or more new species from an original species that may or may not continue to exist so one species branches into two or more new ones this process is the basis for the biological diversity so here we can see the two patterns of speciation one is non branching evolution here one species completely replaces the other species and the second is branching evolution one species evolving from another with both of them existing at the same time so this is the branching evolution so there are two patterns of uh, uh, speciation non branching evolution and branching evolution speciation can occur at uh, widely at different rates so slow rate of speciation is seen with a living horseshoe crab which has diversified into 13 species within last 300 million years a rapid rate of speciation is seen in galapagos finches which have diversified into 13 species within the last 1 lakh years sometimes simply chances uh, chance events can contribute to the speciation for example genetic drift any change in allelic frequency in a population that is due chance of event um, for example floods insect getting sprayed with insecticides earthquake fires etc so your allelic frequency will drastically change allelic frequency is a measure of how common an allele is in a population so especially this is true in small population because the chance of losing an allele is completely become greater in case of small population so there is founder effect seen in genetic drift when a small population colonizes a new habitat which is separate from the rest of the population and interbreeds it can lead to the founder effect 
alleles that were once fairly uncommon in a population now may be more common because this subset of the population is very small and the example is amish population here dwarfism and polydactylity is quite common because of the founder effect migration may contribute to speciation as well so in due to migration uh, transport genes to different gene pool if they mate while they are migrating because their genes are isolated from their original population and the alleles enter a different gene pool there can be two different speciation rate fast and slow why this speciation rate can be different because of generalist organism generalist organisms these are the organisms eat many different kinds of food they are well adapted to many different habitat like the horseshoe crab and tend to remain as a stable species so here stable species is a horseshoe crab specialist organisms they eat more specific foods and only adapted to live in certain habitat like the galapagos finch tend to be unstable as a species and more likely to change so this two kinds of uh, organisms may uh, may affect the speciation rate speciation also becomes rapid when new nutrients become available to the organisms as seen in as seen in the galapagos island so what are the factors which influence the speciation the first obvious factor which influence the speciation is geographical isolation geographical barriers like rivers mountains deserts they separate the species into several groups the members of each group adapt to a new environment and appear as a new species it is considered as one of the most significant cause of the speciation the next factor which influences the speciation is natural selection according to darwin's theory of natural selection the fittest ones are to survive third factor is genetic drift because of the change in the living place of any living thing the pattern of gene flow changes also non adaptive mutations play vital role in forming new species the fourth factor which influences the speciation is reproductive isolation this factors ultimately lead to extreme variations among the group of organisms and as a result they lose the ability to reproduce and create a different kind of species and the last factor which affects the uh, speciation is hybridization using this artificial process human produce new species members from each of two different lineages are mated to create a new species and usually animal husbandry uses this kind of method hybridization so all these are important factors which influences the speciation thank you